Hey, this is Materi, and this is the fourth video in the sound design uh, tutorial series that I'm working on, or I'm doing actually. And we've been over um, what sound design is, we've been over why it's important, we went over oscillators, what they do, and how to use them in Massive, and we've also gone over filters, and most importantly in that, uh, what each one looks like, and this uh, slider, which lets you choose between serial and parallel. Now we'll be going into um, envelopes and LFOs. LFOs also being like a performer and stepper in, in Massive. Uh, this is probably one of the most important parts in sound design, um, other than knowing like the wavetables. Uh, an envelope or envelopes and LFOs really shape your sound. They are essential in sound design. Uh, let's go over exactly what it is. So you can see our fourth um, envelope right here, if we click on fourth in massive, is set to our amp envelope. And we have all these different knobs which do different things. So like we have a delay attack, level, decay, level, and these ones, and release. These ones aren't really important, that's why I just kind of skimmed over them. <clears throat> uh, what's really important is this attack, level, or this attack, decay, level, and release. This is attack, sustain, or attack, decay, sustain, release. This second level knob is uh, sustain. Uh, so by default, if you do a new patch, like new sound and massive, and you go to envelope four, this is your amp envelope, which you can see up here. And it's just, uh, it's whatever. It's just a normal envelope. What an attack does, or maybe I should work from the decay. So decay, or delay, I'm sorry. Delay, I've probably been saying decay the entire time. Whatever. So our delay delays when the signal comes in. So if you think of it, when you press the button is right here at the edge of the box, then it will do all this stuff. So if we put the decay, it's gonna take a second to get to there. So I'm gonna press, one, two, three, press. Press, wait, one, two, three. So you can, I hope you can hear it through my mic, but I'm doing one, two, three, press. Yeah, so you can see the delay. It takes a second for the uh, signal to actually get there, hence why it's called delay. Attack is, you can see it's very visual and, and massive. It's gonna, think of this white line as the level or the position of the knob, but in our turn, let's say it, it's on the amp mod, then it's obviously like a volume mod. So think of this white line as the volume. So it's gonna start at zero and then it's gonna go up and you can see it's really long so it's gonna take a while. That's the attack. So Um, now, our attack, if we make it longer, it obviously take, it takes longer to get to the main sustain point, which is all the way up in our case. Um, decay, it doesn't do anything if your sustain is all the way up, so I'm going to turn the sustain down. And what sustain is, is when it gets to the point and it does the decay, which doesn't matter in our case, it's going to go and while you're holding the note, it's going to be at this level. So we bring it down, the note's going to hold at this level. See how after it went all the way up, it went back down from the decay. So here's uh, the decay. And then it's the sustain, which is the level it's at while you're holding the key. So this knob. It's like really useful for a lot of different things. 
your decay is how long it takes after the initial um, point, the initial attack. So it's going to go all the way up in volume because our level is all the way up. So it's going to go all the way up, and then it's going to take this amount of time to go to the sustain. And that's the decay. So see how with it all the way down, it goes one time, like volume 100 and then volume whatever this is. So volume zero. So it's going to go attack and then with no decay it's just going to go straight down. Now if we put our decay up, now we'll go gradually down. So now I'm just going to set these to default. Now what release does is when you release the key, it's going to take this long to get to the uh, end. So you can see I'm going to 1, 2, 3, let go. And you can see it takes longer the higher the release is up. I already let go. so. It's instantaneous if your release is all the way down, so the it'll the sound will stop instantly. Okay, so back to a new slate. All of these envelopes can affect um, all, any parameter with the box under it, so it could affect any knob, any slider, if there's a box under it. So, in our case, I'll switch. I'll put a low pass on. I'll route my oscillator to the low pass. So now I have a low pass on my uh, saw wave. Now, if I uh, put my envelope on the cutoff knob, it's going to turn the cutoff slowly. If I put the attack up, until it's. Um, until the knob's all the way up. So if I do like this, you can see the knob's gonna turn, 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 turn until it's all the way on. And then it's gonna slowly turn off. One thing to note, uh, or one thing to note, I mean, is that if your release on an envelope is uh, like up, but your amp envelope is not up for your release, then it's not gonna show. So I'm gonna put both of them up. And so we have this tack, which is going to turn the cutoff. And you see it turned it all the way up. And then I let go, and then it slowly brought it back down. You could also put this on like a resonance if you want the resonance to go up. You could put them backwards too, which is. So the resonance at first is all the way up and then it goes all the way off because it's backwards. Then it goes back. Um, that's really all there is to um, envelopes. Just think of this white line in massive in the envelopes as the uh, knob. So the knob will be all the way off, and then you bring it all the way up. Um, just remember, attack, decay, sustain, release. Now, new slate, or new sound. Now we have LFOs. What an LFO is, is a uh, low frequency oscillator, and that's a, a a w like a wave that's so low that it's inaudible, but we can put it on um, certain parameters to affect the parameter. So as opposed to an envelope where it's just one time, if we use an LFO, it's going to continually go up and down. So let me put that on a cutoff like I did earlier in the uh, series. And you'll hear how it's going to go back and forth on the cutoff. It's going to go up and then down, up and then down repeatedly.
Okay, so that's good to know. Uh, so LFOs, you have all these different buttons. At first, it's going to just be a rate button or a rate um, knob, which changes how fast this is going. So how fast it will bring the knob back and forth. You have this res uh, these two buttons, actually. One's a sync, which will uh, beat sync it. So if your tempo is 140 and you sync it, let's say that is the rate and you want to sync it, now it's going to be synced to whatever the ratio is. So 1 12th or 1 8th, 30 second. Uh, fourths. Um, it's really nice. You have this <coughs> uh, position button. Okay, and you have this restart button. <coughs> this restart button, <coughs> excuse me. What the restart button does, let's say I have it off, and then I have this up now. The LFO is just going to continually go even if you're not pressing the button. So I'm going to click, one, two, click, one, two, click, one, two, and you'll hear it. So click, one, two, click, one, two, click, one, two. And you can hear when I click, sometimes it's over here, and when I click, sometimes it's over here. So it just continually goes, it doesn't care. If I have it on, so it's lit up, every time I click it, it's going to start at the beginning right here. Yeah, and then you have an amp um, knob, which affects how much this knob actually, or the LFO actually has on the uh, knob, how much, uh, how drastic it is. I suppose so. So if I turn it down, you could hear no effect because it's all the way off, and I'll slowly turn it on. And you can hear how it has an effect. It's kind of like going like this. Kind of, but um, it's not. Um, the reason it's not is because if you do this. You're actually changing the range, but if you do this, it's just making it so that it has less of an effect. Um, this X fade slider switches between your two uh, selected waves or curve, whatever. So I have a sine wave. Let me turn this a little faster. And then I have a sawtooth. So that's really nice, and you can put an envelope on that just by grabbing it, and we'll just do something like this. It's weird, uh, the amount of stuff you could do. So that just switches between the uh, two different wave types of the LFOs, and you could switch the wave types by either clicking one of these four um, basic waves. So you have a uh, sine wave, a triangle, or a, not triangle, a uh, sawtooth, a square, and a triangle. And again, the uh, white line represents the curves position or the uh, knobs position. It's really nice. Um, or you can change your wave type. You could do that on both by clicking this empty box by default and choosing one of these. There's a bunch to choose from. You could also, uh, Change where the uh, wave starts by moving this around. You just click and drag. 
And this is actually really useful because you can um, really get different sounds out of Let's say you wanted a, so a sound to start right at the uh, tip and then get dip down. Or you wanted it to start at the bottom and then dip up. Or something like in between. And I'll show you where I've actually done this in a sound. I think I do it in this sound. See how I have my um, my LFO brought up? Let's say I had it in the default position. Uh, what you can do, you can double click and it brings you back. So this was default. And then I moved it over and it actually gave it a cool sound. So by default, and then I moved it, and you can already see that makes a giant difference. Um, else that you need to know is uh, where it says LFO right here on the top right, you can change it to a performer, which is almost the same as an LFO. But um, you can load, there's a random button so you can randomize it. But you can see right now it's following this pattern, so it's like a sequencer. And if you click load curve, you can actually drag your own uh, like wave types in and make something really cool and unique. This is gonna probably suck, but whatever. So you just click on it and then you click on one. Uh, another thing about this is you have this yellow triangle which you can click and drag and that's going to be where your sound starts from. And also you can click on the numbers, click, and, click on like 16 and drag it back or you can click on something like, and drag it back and then it'll only loop for this one or this, but let me drag that back. Don't do this to me. Okay, drag that back, and then I could drag it again on the number. So that's something to note. Uh, you have this X fade, which switches between them, just like a normal LFO. Everything else is the same. You have a uh, stepper, which is kind of like a performer. It's a sequencer. Everything's the same. You can change the loop size and whatnot. But this one, instead of doing it like a performer where it's different waves, it's actually just uh, like it sets the value based on these. So it will go from like 0 to f like 50-ish to 100, then 50, back to zero. I don't use it that much, but uh, it is useful for some things. Um, that's really all that needs to be said about LFOs. Just remember, you can put LFOs on every knob. You can put it, like if you put it on the pitch, I'm pretty sure someone's heard that sound in dubstep somewhere. Yeah, and you actually put the rate up and it makes a nice cool sound. If we actually put the pitch lower, the range lower, Let's say 0.5 or something on the pitch. You actually get a pretty cool sound. So just play around with LFOs. Also, don't forget that you can put 
LFOs in your LFOs. So I have LFO 6 affecting the, let's say, the rate of LFO 1. So if I just set this to 4. Some really weird crap goes down. So yeah, you can make some really annoying sounds and some really cool sounds. Just if you get creative with it, you can put envelopes on rates and all this stuff. So <clears throat> that's pretty cool. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. This one was on LFOs, but there's also filters and all this other crap that you can go about um, doing. Um, the next tutorial will be on the effects down here <clears throat> and really their effect on your sound. And I might be able to get um, the effects over here and probably not because there's a lot over here. So I'll just go over these insert effects next tutorial. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch the next one. And tell me what I'm doing right. Tell me if you guys like this tutorial. And maybe some uh, like ideas for new tutorials later on. So again, thanks for watching and bye.